What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Modern Hobbyist. Today I'm going to be showing off the LEDs I added to my keyboard piano so I can have an awesome light show every time I play. Let's get started. Welcome back everybody, I'm Charlie with Modern Hobbyist. Before we get started, if you love do-it-yourself 3D printing and electronics projects, then be sure to subscribe to my channel and click that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Almost exactly a year ago, I decided I wanted to teach myself to play piano because it's a lifelong skill that I will hopefully be able to teach my kids someday. And I definitely don't have too many hobbies already. So anyway, I decided to pick up a keyboard on Amazon. I chose the Alesis Recital full keyboard with semi-weighted keys because I wanted it to feel as real as possible, but I didn't want to spend a ton of money on a fully-fledged Recital keyboard. At just under $250, this piano came with more than enough features for me to learn how to play. One particularly important feature of this keyboard is that it supports MIDI communication over USB. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface, and it's simply a communication protocol for electronic instruments and computers. So by connecting my keyboard to my laptop, I can capture the keys that are being pressed by using programs like Synthesia. Now, when I first bought the keyboard, I only wanted to use the MIDI interface to help me learn by using the Flow Key app. But after a while, I stumbled on some videos by Patrick Peichman and a guy named Rousseau. These two guys make videos of themselves playing covers and original arrangements of popular songs, but with a little bit of extra flair added to them. If you haven't seen their videos, I strongly encourage you to check them out because they're very talented musicians. I'll have them linked in the description in case you're interested. In their videos, they have the notes they are about to play floating down towards the keys, and it's timed up perfectly so that they seem to hit them at the exact right time. They also have some LEDs on their keyboard so that when they hit each key, it lights up their hands. This creates an awesome effect where the light from the notes seems to spill over onto their hands as they play. And it honestly looks like real life Guitar Hero, or Piano Hero, rather. When I saw the LEDs shining on their keyboards, I knew I had to give it a shot, and so I set about trying to recreate what they had done. Now, I don't have any experience with the MIDI protocol, so rather than doing all the programming from scratch, I decided to follow the instructions provided by a fellow YouTuber Alexander Evening. This video will serve as an in-depth tutorial for how to build that project as well as an overview of some of the issues I had while trying to get it set up. All credit for the code goes to Alexander Evening, so make sure to check out his video which I'll also have linked in the description. So now that you know the background behind this project and who to thank for the awesome idea, let's get into the details of the build. To get started, you'll need to pick up a Raspberry Pi Zero, a WaveShare LCD display hat for the Pi, at least two meters of WS2812B LEDs, a micro SD card, and a five volt power supply. For the LEDs, make sure to get the strip with 144 pixels per meter so that the pixels are dense enough to light up all 88 keys on the piano. If you can't find one that's two meters or longer, you can always get two one meter strips and solder them together. Once you've picked up all the components, we can go ahead and get started putting this thing together. The first step is to get the Raspberry Pi Zero up and running by downloading the latest Raspbian Lite image and flashing it to the micro SD card. Before you remove the SD card from your computer, there are two files that we'll want to save onto it first. The first is a blank file called SSH with no extension. This file will be deleted when the Pi boots up, but it will enable SSH so you can access your Pi remotely. The second file is a wpasupplicant.conf file that will tell your Pi how to connect to your home Wi-Fi network. To create this file, open up a text editor, paste in the following content, and save it onto the SD card with the name wpasupplicant.conf. Now when you boot your Raspberry Pi with the micro SD card, it will enable SSH and connect to your home Wi-Fi network allowing you to complete the rest of the steps with no keyboard or monitor connected to the Pi. With the Pi all booted up, you can verify if it connected to your Wi-Fi by accessing your router's configuration portal. Every router is a little bit different, so make sure to check the manual for your specific router to learn how to view connected devices. Once you have the IP address of your Pi, you can go ahead and SSH into it using your favorite SSH client. I'm using a Mac, so I'll just use the terminal application, and I'll use the username Pi and password 
Raspberry, which are the default credentials for the Raspbian operating system. Now that we're SSH'd into the Pi, the first step we're going to do is update the apt-get package manager with the following two commands. Then we have several packages that we need to install in order for the visualizer to work. When those installations complete, we next need to create a script that can be run when a USB MIDI device is detected. To do that, we will open a file called connectall.rb in the user local bin directory and paste the following contents in. Save and exit that file and then adjust the permissions of the file so that the sudo user has permissions to execute it as a script. Next, we need to set up a script that connects to MIDI devices when they're connected to the Pi. To do that, open the following file and add this line to the bottom, making sure the path to your script is correct. You'll now need to reload the UDEV services with these two commands so that we can configure MIDI services to start at boot. With the services reloaded, open the following file and paste these contents into it. Reload the MIDI service daemon, enable it, and start it with the systemctl command. For the next step, we need to clone the visualizer code from Alexander Evening's GitHub repository. When that's finished cloning onto your Pi, install the dependencies listed in the requirements.txt file in his repo using the pip install command. While installing this, make sure that you're using Python 2 and not Python 3, Otherwise, the packages won't work for the visualizer. With the repository cloned to your Pi and all the dependencies installed, all that's left to do is configure the visualizer script to run when the Pi boots up. You can do this by editing the profile file and pasting this command at the bottom. When doing this, make sure that the path to your local repository is correct before saving and exiting the file. For this next part, you're going to want to remove power to your Pi and potentially remove the SD card from its slot because we're going to be doing a little soldering on the Pi. When you're looking at the bottom of a Pi so you can read the text, the very first pin on the top right corner of the Pi can function as a 5-volt input, which we will use for power. The third pin from the right on that same top row is the ground pin, which we will connect to both the LED strip and the power input jack. The last wire will be soldered onto pin 18, which is the sixth pin from the right on the top row. Since I put my Pi into a 3D printed case, which by the way can be found linked in the description, I made sure to feed the plug for the LED strip through the small hole on the side before soldering the data pin to my Pi. This way I had a nice clean look for all my wires once everything was put together. With all of the soldering done, now would be a good time to plug everything in and give it a test run. It'll take a while to boot up just because the Pi is still a fully blown computer, but once it does, you should be able to press a key on your keyboard and have the LED strip light up. If everything worked as expected, we can go ahead and start putting things into the case. With all the wires neatly tucked away, I installed the LCD display hat on the Pi and closed it up by screwing the top of the case to the standoffs. With the case assembled, that should be the last thing we need to do before throwing this thing onto the keyboard. I just used some double-sided sticky tape to hold all the electronics in place, and I designed and printed a simple rail to hold the LED strip at an angle over the keys on the piano. The rail that I printed certainly isn't the prettiest option when it comes to holding the LED strip, but it was the cheapest option for me, so that's what I went with. If you want, you could order an LED diffuser rail off Amazon, which would offer a cleaner look for your setup. I'll have one linked in the description just in case that's something you're interested in. Now that everything's installed on your keyboard, it's time to plug it in and see the finished product. Now I can adjust the color and other aspects of the LEDs using the menus on the display. And I can start and stop MIDI recordings so I can create awesome videos like this.
For a full list of features, make sure to check out Alexander Evening's video on this project, which once again I'll have linked in the description. Now all that's left for me to do is get better at playing piano, and maybe someday I can be as cool as Patrick Peichman or Rousseau. Until then, I'll probably just use the lights to impress my friends, family, and coworkers until they can't stand me anymore. Before I let you go, I want to give you one last tip. When you go to power this thing up, make sure that you grab the right power supply. The 5 volt jack I used is the exact same size as the 12 volt power supply I've used in other projects, and due to a minor mix up in my workshop, I ended up plugging the 12 volt into the Pi and absolutely fried it. So that's just something to watch out for. Make sure you grab the 5 volt power supply and not the 12 volt one. In the future, if I ever redo this project, I would probably make sure to add a voltage regulator so I don't accidentally blow up another Pi. And I'm also thinking of swapping the Pi out for an Arduino of some sort to both simplify the setup and shorten the boot time. The Pi does a great job of driving this project, but it's definitely overkill for something like this. For now though, I'm super happy with how it turned out and I can't wait to show it off to all of my friends. Otherwise, that's it for this project. I hope you guys found it useful and I hope you go out and start making awesome piano light shows of your own. If you have any questions or suggestions, make sure to leave a comment down below and I'll definitely try to get back to you. If you liked this video, help me to continue to make awesome projects like this by supporting me on Patreon at whatever level you can. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram to stay up to date on the projects that I'm working on and smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. That's all for this one though. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.